Hello traders, it is Monday, March 30th, and we're about halfway through the trading session right now. Market's not doing a whole lot of anything. From the open, we had this red bar here, a couple of long tails, and a gradual grind higher that looked like it could reverse almost at any time. You could see how the 1OP indicator was going higher and higher and higher. And in here, I said, take profits on your long positions. Right now, I've had, I think, six stock trades. I've had six winners, but... Three of them have been very tiny, tiny winners, like just enough to scratch the trade. So not a whole lot going on today. You know, I had a nice trade in Microsoft, made some money on that one. Had a nice trade in INO. That was a good little long. Had a short in EQR. That was a nice little short. But apart from that, it's been pretty slow going. Sooner or later, we were going to have a rest in the market. Looks like today is that day. And as we started to get up to this high from Friday, you could see how we were compressing. Couldn't get through that high a day. Couple attempts here. Not happening. So the way that the day probably will shape up is we will see a range in here pretty tight you can see right around this 258.50 level will probably be the low and the high will probably be the high of the day very close to it that also is the high from Friday and above that we've got resistance at that six, uh, 262 level so market's going to have to do quite a bit to get up there on a longer term basis, I think that we might see some selling this week. Now there's good news and there's bad news. So let's hit the, the good news first. The good news is that we've had these nice long green candles off of the low. And that was the low from last Monday, a week ago. You know, this is the first Monday in three weeks that we have not opened limit down Monday morning. Now the futures overnight were pretty weak when President Trump said that we're going to have to extend the shutdown through April. I thought I was going to come in and see the futures down 50, 80 points, maybe even more than that. I thought this would be really uh, well ill-received by the market and that we would start to see some selling today. Didn't happen. That's a good sign. That's a sign that the bid is starting to form here. When you have lots of bad news hitting the market and the market is able to hold the bid, that tells me that buyers are aggressive and that that bid is continuing to increase. Now, I think that this week, the really big news that's going to come out, we've got official PMIs are going to be hitting the wires uh, Wednesday. We've got uh, ISM manufacturing, ISM services, those are all important numbers, but I think the really big number that's going to shock some people will come Wednesday, and that's when ADP reports. ADP processes payrolls for medium and small companies. They have their finger on the pulse. They know exactly how many checks they cut. That could be dramatically lower. So that number could scare a lot of people. I also think that we've got about two more weeks of very heavy news related to the coronavirus. Lots of tests going out right now. I believe almost a million people in the U.S. have been tested for coronavirus. That's going to continue to expand. So every day that those statistics come in, they start reporting, here's how many confirmed cases of coronavirus there are. Here's how many cases there were yesterday. Everyone assumes that that is the growth rate. It is not the growth rate. We're simply testing people and that's why the number is expanding so dramatically for another week or two we're still going to be devising or developing or getting a feel for that base and then once we have the base then we'll be able to gauge the growth of the spread of the coronavirus so i think that the news is going to continue to be really heavy for the next two weeks now if the market can shoulder the news that's coming in the next two weeks then we know this support level right in here is an excellent entry point for us and that we can with confidence buy some positions in here so we're also seeing option implied volatilities come in let's put up that vxx on the other chart you'll be able to see that all you needed to have was a pause in the market you can see how it's dropped after last week so i think that we might see another little pop up a little bit of a sell-off this week on some very concerning economic statistics and so you'll see a little bit of a rally in it but it may not get much above 60 and then you'll see it roll over again that would be a lower high double top that would be a sign that the market is starting to finally find support and that we can come in and buy now 
the economic repercussions of what's going to be happening here in the next two, three, four weeks, that's going to take six to eight months to resolve. Some businesses will be hit much harder than other businesses. The whole stimulus plan, businesses being able to borrow money, and as long as they maintain all of their employees, those loans will be forgiven. All that plan has yet to really pan out. We've got to see how all of this really works and if it works. But I think that with the $2 trillion stimulus package and people getting checks in the next couple of weeks, everyone will take a deep breath. They'll do what they're supposed to. They'll stay home. The market will gradually start to have a bid. Now, you've also got a lot of lenders who are going to be looking for payments, mortgage payments. You've got landlords who are going to be looking for rent payments. Uh, you've got large property management companies who are going to be looking for lease payments. A lot of these businesses are not going to be able to pay it, so there's going to be some leniency there given the magnitude of this crisis. So, But those stocks will probably be pretty soft, pretty weak in here. People will be wondering if there's going to be a credit issue. Now, the Fed is backstopping everything. There's another $4 trillion to come if we need it. So uh, all the stops have been pulled out. So I think that first things first, the virus has to start to settle down. I think there are going to be some really shocking numbers that come out this week. The Fed is saying that there could be as many as 45 million unemployed people. I think that's probably a pretty accurate number. 50 million is kind of what I was thinking. Look at the roads. Drive on the roads for five minutes. There are no cars on the roads. There are no cars in the shopping malls. There's nobody eating out at restaurants. The economy is at a full stop right now. So we should expect horrific numbers. So we get through the next few weeks. I think those numbers start to improve. I think you'll see some parts of the country open up on their own. States will have that discretion. Municipalities will have that discretion. And gradually we'll see a couple of areas start to get back to business. But overall, the country will remain at a standstill for a while. So the price action this week is really what we need to watch, and that is the tell. If the news is absolutely horrible, couldn't be worse, couldn't imagine the virus spreading more than this, look at all the unemployment. If we get all that news this week and the market comes down and makes a higher low, that's when you want to aggressively start buying if you're an investor with a longer-term time horizon. You'll be able to look back five or six months from now and say, yes, this was an excellent entry point. If you're a swing trader, you need to take advantage of that dip and you need to sell out of the money bullish put spreads that expire in the course of two weeks or so and focus on those really strong companies. Option premiums are still very, very high right now. We want to take advantage of that. Last week, I produced my weekly swing trading video on Tuesday night. Normally, I do it on Wednesday night. I think I'm going to do it Tuesday night again this week because I'm looking for that week ADP report Wednesday morning, and I want that selling. I really want that selling because I want one more bite of the apple. I want one more chance to try and get some trades off at really good prices, and that might be our last shot to do it. Then we'll see a rally higher. We'll see option implied volatilities come in. And then any subsequent dip after that, we may actually be in call buying mode. Really depends on how all of this plays out. And I'm not going to be real aggressive with that strategy. But it's possible that in another month, month and a half, we're looking at maybe even some call buying opportunities, buying options that have maybe two or three months of life on really strong companies. So that's how I see everything playing out giving you a little bit more information on a longer-term market perspective right now, getting a lot of questions on that, and there's not a lot to look at in today right now. We've really been compressing like we haven't seen in a long time. So we haven't seen a tight range like this in probably the last month and a half. And you can see this is about a 20-point S&P range, so not a lot going on today from a day trading standpoint. Now, I was looking at this resistance building here. There are a couple of shorts that I had uh, on my list, kind of taking a look at those. I'll show you a few of those in case the market were to pull back. BA was setting up pretty nicely. 
but you can see it's kind of flatlining here. I like this little breakdown in here. Nothing going on there right now. WYNN, we're going to have the Macau numbers this week. So we'll get to see if those gaming revenues are improving at all in China. They're probably just barely getting those casinos back, to, back opened up. So watch for those numbers. TLRY also looked like a decent little short today. And you can see how it's starting to pull back. We'll go into that daily chart. Had a little bit of a short covering rally in here. And now it's starting to give up some of those gains. So these are all decent opportunities that I'm looking at for day trading today on the short side. AKR was another nice little short. So those look good on the short side. We go into uh, relative strength 30. Let's take a look at what's popping there on the long side. And you can see URI has been pretty strong today, still up near the high of the day. SNPS. I'm going to go into another list bull run because this will give me a look at stocks that have a little bit more momentum to them. DHT, we're seeing some of these shipping stocks actually move higher. And I think part of that might be because there are a lot of oil reserves and these tankers are being used to hold some of that oil surplus, knowing that the... When the demand returns, it could be returning pretty quickly. So COG actually looks pretty good. That's coming up to the high of the day. So I'm going to show you a couple of uh, other stocks that I think might work out pretty well. I'm going to put up my custom search, take a look for some stocks that might work well on a longer term basis. Again, you might be able to buy these later today. You might be able to hold them overnight. Uh, and have an overnight swing trade. I wouldn't hang on to a much longer than that, given that I feel that we're going to see a little bit of market weakness this week. I think these numbers are going to really be pretty depressing. So if we take a look, HPQ has done really well. And I'm just going to click through these symbols here. There aren't many. The way that I found these stocks, very easy search, nothing dramatic. Just looking for a very powerful trend using the ADX, looking for a stock that's above the prior day high and that has good option liquidity. So we had four candidates that came in on that. HPQ is one, you know, and I and you can see how it's at the high of the day right now. We'll take that daily chart and look at it. It's got plenty of room to get up to the 200 day moving average. Dell also looked pretty good. So we're seeing a lot of demand right now for any cloud services. That's why Microsoft popped this morning. They had huge increase in their cloud services and their traffic. INO is an interesting stock. I traded that early this morning. I love the fact that it had this giant spike, gave all those gains back up, came back and compressed above that horizontal resistance, which is now support, and it's starting to break out and show some signs of life. So this is a nice little stock that you can trade intraday. It's an $8 stock. If you can make 20 or 25 cents on an $8 stock, provide some really nice day trading returns. MTCH, I think I've mentioned this stock in the last few days. You can see how it went up and tested that 100-day moving average and backed off of it quickly. So now we're seeing a little bit of strength today. That also looks pretty good. I would say for any of these, and you can see strong, 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 and then it starts to give up the gains. It's a pretty typical pattern. It gets overextended on the upside, gives some of those gains back. I think that this is the kind of stock that you can go in and sell some out of the money puts on. But you can see it's got a fairly high amount of debt per share. So I'm not sure why. To my understanding, this is an internet-based company that uh, really is in the dating space. Also not sure why people would be dating during a coronavirus outbreak, but... I'm just going with the price patterns. I'm not questioning why the prices are moving higher or lower, but match actually looks like uh, it's moving the right way right now. ZM has continued to be strong. That Zoom, it is uh, online conferencing software being used for education. So it also looks good. Microsoft, we're going to put up real quick. Take a look at that. I like the fact that it is above the 100-day moving average. Out of all the stocks that I'm showing you today, I like Microsoft the best. It's a mega cap tech stock. Microsoft, really well diversified technology revenue stream. So I think Microsoft is going to continue to perform well. I really want to see it stay above that 100-day moving average. And I think that you can sell a bullish put spread below that 200-day moving average, which comes in around 150 or so. So 
I'm going to be looking at that level and we can bring that up right now in fact and we'll take a look at the we'll go out to the April 17th take a look at that 150 put spread and right now for the 150 149 bullish put spread you can see that you can probably get 20 cents for that, which is what I need to get. So that expires in three weeks. And the 150 strike price takes you below the 200-day moving average. Actually, this red dotted line in the option chain, that is the 200-day moving average. So let's do this. Let's unclick these and let's go below that because I really want to stay below the 200-day moving average. You can see 15 cent bid offered at 30. Should be able to get 20 cents for this spread right here. I need to get 20 cents because this will represent a 25% return on investment. Difference in the strike prices is $1. Credit received is 20 cents. So I'm putting up 80 cents in margin to make 20 cents. That's a 25% return if Microsoft can hold its 100 day moving average, excuse me, if it can hold its 200 day moving average, I like it. Stock wants to move higher. It's had good news recently. Hover over the E. We can see when the next earnings release date is. Lo and behold, it's on 422, which is after the April 17th expiration date for these options. So the options expire before the earnings announcement. Perfect. I like that spread a lot. So that is the video for today. Microsoft is the stock. Love that bullish put spread. If you like this content, please give it a thumbs up. Look for some selling later in the week on some dire economic releases. Watch for that higher low in the market. That's your signal that buyers are starting to come in and support the market, that the market can shoulder horrible, horrible news. That's what we want to see as buyers then we'll know that we can start aggressively accumulating some stocks in here for a longer term trade. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so that you never miss one of these videos. I promise you I'm going to have some great trades in each one of them. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.